we're going to continue our study tonight on spiritual growth coming out of 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And the word of the Lord reads from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 3 from the New Living Translation. It reads this. So, Pete, so get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisies, jealousy, and all kinds, all unkind speech. Verse 2, like newborn babes, you must crave and you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. Now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. So when we when we look at this on tonight, we're looking at the fact that this, we, as we're talking about script, a spiritual growth, uh, we, we looking last week, we dealt with get rid of all evil behavior, which meant cut off all connections. Don't leave a trace. Okay. Be done with all deceit, which meant intentionally not being truthful. Not only that, but I thought about it even a little bit more before, out since last week. And it also mean manipulate, to be manipulative. And the scripture is, is to be done with all types of deceit. Be done with all of it, okay? So whatever <laughs> falls under the umbrella of deceit, the scripture is saying, be done with it. Why is the scripture telling us that? And before I go to the, to, to the yeah, well, I go there now. The scripture is telling us that now because when we did our overview last week of chapter one, it was telling us that these was people that was born again. These was people that that God was saying that you need to be holy. And so in verse in chapter one, verse 16, it said, so so be holy. Excuse me. And and when I look at that. When the scripture has already said that they was born again, and then in verse 16, verse 14, it said, don't go back um, to your old evil desires. Then verse 16 picked it up and said, you must be holy. And then I thought about it. I said, man, there's a difference between being saved and being holy. And that difference is growth. That difference comes and it starts with the desire to be holy, to, to be different, to be set apart. And so as we come into this and the scripture starts off by saying, so get rid of all evil behaviors and be done with all deceit. Now it goes into be done with all hypocrisies. To be hypocritical, God is saying, no, 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 be yourself. And, and I think about it as I'm talking, how Paul had to confront Peter because when, when, when it was just them, he, he, he was cool with the Gentiles. But when other people came around, he kind of started acting different and, and, and strange to Paul that, Paul had to confront him about, hey, 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 listen, man, this is, these are God's people too. And, and so when the scriptures say, get rid of all evil behavior, be done with all deceit, comma, hypocrisy, what is, what is it telling us about hypocrisy? Why, why do it, why is the scripture urging us to get rid of hypocrisy? Anybody can, can, can speak to that question. Well, I think one of the main uh, things about hypocrisy is we oftentimes do it because we feel uncomfortable. Hmm. It's, it's a reaction 
to some environment or some conversation or to some person. And I think what what this is kind of a preemptive warning like hey, know what you know what you believe, stand on that and be ready to defend it. Mm-hmm. Because oftentimes I think we get into situations where we may not be thinking that that might come up where oh, I'm surprised that we're talking about this at this you know, event or this time of day or with this group of people, I'm shocked that that came up or we're in a position where people, we think that they're more influential or they have um, power, there are our, our superiors or whatever it may be that it would make our flesh feel like, uh, this is kind of sticky. And with the culture right now, which is why we have to be so careful not to fall into it, Everyone is this inclusion thing is going on and this politically correct thing is going on, which, of course, our goal is not to set out to offend, but also our goal is not to take down from what the gospel is. And so sometimes I believe our hypocrisy comes from I wasn't prepared for this conversation. I I didn't know that I was going to have to do that now. I'm I'm not ready. And so in those moments, sometimes our flesh is like, child, back out, <laughs> back out quiet and quick. Just get out of the way so that th- that this awkward moment doesn't get extended. Yeah. And I, and I was thinking about when the scripture also talks about hypocrisy, while Kim was talking, it's also mean don't be ashamed mm-hmm. be- because we, we will try to, you know, try to fit in when God is saying, don't fit in. But neither do we have to force God into something. And and I was thinking today, I was talking to a young lady in D.C. Um, and, you know, she, she had some of her special words. Um, and But while she had some special words, she was exhorting how she prayed and, and, and asked the Lord, Lord, I need your help and all of this and all of that. And I thought about that I don't have to check everybody just because they don't you that they use certain words and, and things like that. Because she know my stance. Mm-hmm. Therefore she said, excuse me, um, so forth and so on. Mm-hmm. So so people under we're not being hypocritical right. when we allow people to be themselves mm-hmm. and and say things that we don't say or to say sinful things or to use sinful words. We're not being hypocritical because we don't check them. It's not that I'm ashamed of the gospel or you ashamed of the gospel. They know your stance. Mm-hmm. This is why they say, uh, excuse me, I, 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 I shouldn't have said that in front of you. They know your stance. And, and so it, it's a testament when your life is powerful enough that you ain't got to say, don't say nothing. Mm-hmm. That in within them, they will say something to let you know that, you, you know, um, excuse me, but I am who I am now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so, and we don't have to shun people away because we're so overbearing. And so when we when the scripture tell us in First Peter two and one, so get rid of all evil behavior, then with all deceit, and then it goes into hypocrisy. You, you, we we don't have to act like we more than. Mm-hmm. The scripture talks about um, not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. So we don't have to try to act like we spiritual wonders. Um, when the scripture done told us not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Um, it's, and you know, and sometimes this is heightened when we get around certain people because we trying to prove a point in the scripture saying, no, you don't have to be hypocritical. Um, it make me think about those boys, the sons of Sceva, uh, when they was being hypocritical, like they were so spiritual that like they, they can cast out all these devils and the devil beat them to a naked pope and they had to run away. Um, but you don't, we don't have to be hypocritical. So the scripture is saying that, yes, we're saved, encouraging us to be holy, but 
one of the ways to be holy is get rid of hypocrisy. Okay, anybody else on the word hypocrisy before we move to the next word when the scripture tell us to get rid of all behavior, which is now jealousy, what we're getting ready to go into. Go ahead, preacher. Um, good evening, y'all. Um, I think, you know, uh, when it comes to hypocrisy, it's basically trying to be something that you are not. Yes, sir. Have uh, really, you know, turned a new leaf from that type of behavior and now you are you have tasted and see how God is that God is good mm -hmm. and he has delivered you from those type of behavior now when you see those people who are indulged in those behavior don't try to fit in and do those things to make you feel like oh I know how to do this you know just to fit in mm -hmm. you know be you know if you are not that way any longer, it's okay. Right. It's okay to be different. Mm -hmm. You know? You So you worry about what they're going to say or say, oh, now nah, you all, you know, you, you are spiritual now. Okay. You know, I'm okay if you call me spiritual. Yeah. You know? I'm okay if you give me, because good names are, good name is better than riches. I mean, I would rather take you telling me that, oh, I'm, because um, my light is shining, you see me different. Mm -hmm. That is something different about you, rather than saying that, yeah, that's the same old James. You know, or when he come around, we all we, we able to do things, you know. But when they see you, like you stated earlier, when they see you and the same things, you know, I remember, I'll say this real quickly. Uh, when I was in command, you know, my leaders, when they see me, the same behaviors they put, they, they put away because they know I don't condone those type of behaviors. Mm -hmm. You know, and they would say, oh, excuse me, sir, I apologize. Oh, you know, when they see me coming, whatever they're doing, they will hide it. If they were doing something that they know that, hey, you know, he is different yes. from any commander that we ever been with. You know, and I respect it. And that's that's a sign of respect. Mm -hmm. Not only that, the respect, not only that they respect me, but they respect the, the spirit of God that lives inside of me. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to let your life Time, wherever you go. So if you're trying to let uh, dim the light when you go around a certain group of people and trying to act like them, so they can, you know, make, say that oh you're cool or um, yeah you all right or you know you still got it or whatever, then it's a waste of time. Right, right. It's a waste of time. Or we come to church and we act all spiritual. We run around and run around the church and spin and and beat the floor with our feet for so for so long. Then after that, when we go home, we get an attitude and we get, I mean, what is that? You know, yes. I remember when we were doing Bible studies and I said something and uh, I almost got my head chopped off. You mm -hmm. know, like, oh, when some of us are running around or, or shouting, you don't know what we'd have been through. I don't know. But we, our behavior, when we come to church in the building, the four square of the building, okay, let's not act different when we are among our brethren and the sisters. And also act different when we are home when nobody's seeing you. Right, right. You know, your life, your life, it has to, it have to line up. Yes. You know, I'm not saying that you're perfect, but it has to line up. Mm -hmm. You can't say one thing and do other, uh, something different. You know, we all struggle, and 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 I know everything is progressive. You know, it's progressive. Some same things it take a while for you to, you know, especially when when you you God time is the best time. God, you know, does it in his own time because you you wanted it. And sometimes God does it immediately, you know, to change you. But same things, you know, there's people still struggle with certain things that they're asking God to deliver them from and thanking God. Once they ask, we gotta just continue thanking God that God, I believe that you have delivered me from this type of behavior. Now go back and keep doing it because you don't see the change. Mm -hmm. You know? So yeah. that's that's what I wanted to say uh, in reference to uh, hypocrisy. Yeah, and and and, I, and and what you say is so true because it's being played out in this in this lesson because this the growth process that you was talking about because in chapter one he declared that they was born again, okay, but now in chapter two he's saying put away all all these evil behaviors. So there there there's a uh, there's a progression that is happening here that yeah now that you say 
now there's it's time to grow. It's time to develop. When a baby is born, everything in that baby that they need to be 100 years old is there. It just needs to develop. They need to grow. How do it grow? They, there are certain things that they grow out of while they're growing into at the same time. Anybody else on hypocrisy before we go to the next word of jealousy? All right. So, so get rid of all evil behaviors. Be done with all deceit. Hypocrisy. Now the word jealous comes up. And, 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 uh, it says get rid of jealousy. One thing that newborn babes or believers have to do is stop comparing ourselves. We, we, we cannot keep looking at somebody else and thinking that we should be where they're at, okay? The word jealousy means fearful of losing attention, unpleasant suspicion, okay? That means unpleasant suspicion. I'm, I'm looking at you. I, ain't no, I, have, I haven't said a word, but I'm looking at you with regret. I have an issue with you because of me fearful of losing attention. Okay. I'm in other words, I'm fearful when 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 somebody else is getting more attention with my wife than me. I can become fearful. I can become fearful of losing her attention. I am jealous. Okay. All right. It, jealousy can also go into holding grudges. So get rid of grudges. Get rid of those things that, that has caused me to get in this position that now um, I'm fearful of losing the attention and I possess unpleasant suspicion. Not truthful, but unpleasant. See, because some things can be unpleasant, especially when it's internal and, and I have not expressed it and so now I'm going around and I'm dealing with this iniquity of jealousy. See, iniquity means hidden sin, things that nobody can see. It's something that's within me. And so I I, I can revert back to hypocrisy and act like I don't I'm not jealous. I can act like I got everything together. But the scripture is saying deal with what's internal as well as what's external. And, and I asked my wife, y'all know she likes to believe that she's a word person, and I believe that she is. So I asked her, I said, okay, I want you to explore these two words because I think a lot of time in the church we get them mixed up, jealousy and envy. And so I'm gonna let her touch those and then we'll open it up for questions or comments if you want to expound upon jealousy or this envy okay so a lot of times people do use the words interchangeably but the truth of the matter is while they can stem from the same kind of place they're not the same thing mm -hmm. um an easy way to kind of think of it is jealousy is an emotional rivalry there's something that i'm thinking about you which gives you an unfair advantage over me. And I don't like that you have it. Whether it's real or perceived, oftentimes jealousy is, it deals with perception of how I see you. Mm. Um, about you having some type of advantage that I think I should have. So it's, um, it can be described as a feeling of happiness, of unhappiness caused by wanting what you have. So, I can be unhappy that you have this and I want it. Where envy is more of a resentful contemplation. So I, I'm not worried that you'll take what I have or I don't, I'm concerned about you having something that I don't. When I'm envious, I want what you have mm -hmm. to the point where I don't want you to have it. Hmm. This, this goes farther than... <laughs> Oh man, she always get the good this or that. No, now it's she always gets the this or that, and I want hers. 
I don't I don't want one of my own. Don't tell me where you got it from. I don't want you to have what you have. Mm. And so these things, this this is why in the scripture is covering both of them because they kind of it's all about we need to be content with what God has given us. Yes. And when we begin to um, exhibit jealousy or envy, what we're saying is what God has given me to either steward, to have as a family, whatever gift God has given me, whatever my personality is, I'm un, I'm uncontent. I'm incontent. I want what you have, and I don't want you to have it because I think I can do it better. And the de- there's so much danger with these because if we're honest, when we are um, discontent with what God has given us, in a way, it's saying to God, he don't know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. See, because he knows what we can handle. He knows what will best suit us. This is why he's given the callings and the giftings. Mm-hmm. And he's given them to who needs them and who he knows will do what needs to be done. He hasn't made a mistake. That's but right. when I begin to feel jealous or envious, what I am actually saying is, okay, God, I know you gave Mr. Arthur this, and I know you gave Zakara that, but they ain't right for it. That, that if you give it to me, I'll show you what I can do with X, Y, or Z. And that's a very dangerous place for us to live in, um, especially as believers, because how can we show the love of Christ if I want what you have to the point where I don't want you to have it anymore? Mm-hmm. Or I'm so... Um, consumed with thinking that you can do something I, you won't I can't have mine because you are gonna do it better where is our focus then with when it relates to what God has called us to and 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 th- there's so much of this that go on among believers right inside the church okay um, people don't want th- the lead singer to have the solo. <laughs> Okay, Um, I I can do it better than them. You know, um, why they always get the opportunity to preach. And, you know, it's 30 of us here and and, and only one person is always preaching. You know, and and a lot of this stuff goes on. and, And Peter is telling these believers that God can see that. He's telling them that your salvation is not just what people can see. This is why, when, and we're going to get into it in verse 2, when they talk about that you grow into a full experience. It's not that you just grow in, in the knowledge of God, but a full experience of salvation. It's, it's more than me just putting so much word in me and, and, and I can talk it. Mm-hmm. But but Peter is letting these people know, get rid of jealousy. De- deal with the stuff that nobody else can see because last week we dealt with what people can see, evil behavior, okay, as well as deceit. Now they're saying, deal with your hypocrisies as well as Jealousy. Anybody on, on, on jealousy before we, we, we move on? All right. We're going to move on to, it said, all and all unkind speech. Lord have mercy. <laughs> now, y- y'all, this ain't about cussing. Right. But this is about slander. I, I should not have to tear you down to lift me up. And, and one of the things that bug me is when I see pastors that tear down other pastors to promote themselves. Peter said, get rid of that. So, so listen, Peter is talking on all levels too. He's not, he's just not talking about external and internal, but he's saying, regardless of where you at in this right structure or in your growth with Christ, be done with all of this stuff. 
be done with all unkind speech. Okay? Tearing down one another. Be it a back, we don't talk about this stuff a whole lot, but backbiters, this stuff is still in the scripture. Now, when I came up, it was it was <laughs> it was on, on, on a recurring message every Sunday. Okay, but bike biting. Say get that. Because th th this hypocrisy that we just talked about, th th this unkind speech lends itself to that. Okay? You speak well of me face to face, but you dog me when you're talking to somebody else. You love me in the public, but you can't stand me when you are with your crew. Get rid of all unkind speech. And anybody, before we keep going here, because this unkind speech is a big thing. I wanted to say about this unkind speech, it's important that we really get to the root of the unkind speech because my mouth is going to say what my heart feels. Mm -hmm. So this is the... ...with the root of my heart being desperately wicked <laughs> and needing to... Do it as the Bible says. If I have something against you, I'm supposed to come to you. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're supposed to be grown enough to have a conversation. I'm supposed to be able to come to you and say, whether it makes sense to the person or not, since, listen, I've had something against you. Um, please forgive me. I, I'm i working on my relationship with God, and I want you know to be sure that I'm clear and free. And we often think that because I didn't say anything, then I don't have unkind speech. Mm. That ain't true. The speech is here. And in the right uh, environment, circumstance, situation, enough pressure, a hot enough day, um, a wild enough child, and a, and, a, and a wayward word or look, and it's all going to come out. Mm. And we, so often those who, and this is why this hypocrisy is so such a big thing, we have to be honest. And that doesn't mean I need to be nasty to you because I feel a way towards you. But I need to own that. I need to say, okay, this is where I am and this ain't right. So I need to go and fix it. We think that just because, well, that's just how I feel. And I'm just going to be whatever. I'm just, I'm just real. I'm just, no, you're real nasty. Because mm -hmm. that's not how that's supposed to go. Just because I feel a way doesn't mean I'm supposed to mistreat you. Right. So... We like, well, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Come on now. We, we'll we try this stuff sometimes. Well, I don't want to be hip hypocritical, so I just don't speak to her. Well, that's ugly. And that's not the way that you're supposed to behave. And that's not what God has called us to, especially in the household of faith. Some things ought not to be, as we know the scripture says. And how they're gonna, people are going to know we love one love we're Christ's disciples by the love we show towards one another. And I can't even speak to you because I'm not going to be hypocritical. No, what I need to do is speak to you and then confess my sin to you. Say, listen, so I just wanted to get this clear. I want to get it right. Please forgive me and go on. Because just because we aren't saying it doesn't mean we don't have unkind speech. Anybody else on this unkind speech? Go ahead, well, preacher. I would say that, you know, what I think is, uh, you know, it's a spirit that we're dealing with. You know, everything that we're talking about is a spirit. It has a name. We named it, you know, it's a spirit. So, um, you know, as the word, the Bible says, you know, out of the mouth, the abundance of the heart speaks. Mm -hmm. So what is within your heart, you know, um, since it's deeply in your heart, it's hard for you to get rid of it because when you are among the same people, those type of spirits, they are familiar spirits. They are familiar. So you have it in your heart. So when you meet people who are the same way, it's easy for you to indulge in that type of behavior. Start talking, gossiping about other people, talking about other people, saying all kind things about them, you know. And that all that also leads to being jealous. 
mm -hmm. you know, speaking all of this, all, all of them are related because um, they are not good, period. Mm -hmm. None of them are good as a Christian is on becoming of a Christ-like. Right, right. You know, you don't go around talking about people. You don't go around speaking evil or, or, or look at him, he thinks, or she thinks, she all that, you know, or this and this and that. But we say, oh, girl, what's going on? Oh, man, what's up? You know, all of that is, is also being a hypocrite, yeah, yeah. you know, um, not being a, 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 uh, when you say you love me, love is, a, is to me, I always say, if you say you love me, then show, let your action show that you love me, mm -hmm. you know, don't pretend to say with your mouth and say you love me, but your action is totally different. You know, you do things differently when it comes to, um, you, when you with your friends or when you with your family members and you trying to dog me. You know, and one of the things that, you know, I, and, and, and y'all know me, I'm very trans trans transparent when it comes to certain things. You know, I'll give you an example. Like, um, before, like, me and my, my wife, when we around in France, I try to find myself, you know, trying to um, make fun of my wife. Mm -hmm. Right? I used to do that. You see, I used to. Then she was like, why is it that every time we are around this type of our friends, you try to make fun of me, mm -hmm. you know? And I realized that, you know, she doesn't like that and I shouldn't. You know, even if what I'm saying is true and they know that, I shouldn't. I should be lifting it up in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of what they're saying, I should be hey, standing behind her, you know? Because if she mentioned it back to me, then I, I should realize that you know, it's the behavior that I need to stop. Yes, sir. You know, so it's the same thing when we are around the same people, regardless if it's our loved ones or our, our, our brother or sister in Christ, we need to be defending them rather than indulging in what or agreeing to what the person is saying, because we don't even know that to be true. Mm -hmm. You know, but yet we listen and before you know we didn't took it and we also went and told somebody then it becomes a, 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 a gossip it becomes oh uh oh yeah it's a rumor you know you are part of it right you, admit to it, you know put us put us up just just cut it point blank mm -hmm. you know if you like me when people come to me about anything i say hey i mean if you have an issue with this person why don't you go straight home yeah, yeah. Come to me, it's gonna help you mm -hmm. come and tell me it's not gonna help you because there's nothing that the issue is the issue that you have right now that you're telling me, I'm pretty sure I ain't the only one you didn't told. You didn't told somebody else. But what I'm telling you, my advice to you is go straight to the person. Mm -hmm. Go resolve that issue because if you call yourself a Christian, then this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. you know, I never give anybody advice without using the word of God and say, hey, this is what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you what I did about uh, 15, 20 years ago because it ain't helped me. Right, right. I'm going to tell you what the Word of God says. If I was you, this is what I would do. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's basically the, from the point that I see because it's a fun. So if you are you have that type of spirit living inside of you and you want to get rid of it, then you, you need to be, you know, fasting. It's the same things come by fasting and praying. So you got it. I know everything is progressive, you know, coming from a baby, drinking milk, and as you mature in the Word of God, you start eating meat. You know, and understanding, getting better understanding. So, Paul, I believe Peter was saying that now that you have drunk milk, you have understand. You know, you've been around us, the teaching and everything. Now, nah, get rid of all this. You know, you shouldn't mm -hmm. be drinking milk no more. Mm -hmm. You know, you should be have. You should have understanding now. So there's certain things. You know, you need to get rid of. You can't be walking around with a with a. Uh, 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 poopy diaper, expect somebody to change it for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you got to change that. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to change that. You're not a baby no more. Mm -hmm. You got to change it. You can't, you got to, you got to grow up. You got to mature. And that's what I, I believe uh, Peter was saying about all of this stuff. And I believe that some of us mature Christians, we still have those type of things, behaviors, because we think it's okay. Oh, God is working on me. God is working. But you have to first recognize that I have this issue. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's to you know. If I, if I just um, uh, watch this, this number, like, you gotta, you gotta start from the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I have this problem. I admit 
you know, you've said it several times, you know what, and I recognize that this is a problem and I want to get rid of it. And that's the first step of getting healed mm -hmm. or getting delivered. Amen. Amen. In, in addition to that, when you were saying that about um, when people come to you with different things or, or as believers, what our first order of business should be, this we like to we talk about the scripture that talks about we to prefer our brethren, but they get the benefit of the doubt. We shouldn't jump in because this is my home girl, and so I don't know any of the details, but I'm I'm with her. Now you don't know what has happened. So the thing to do in order to prefer your brethren is to say, hey, listen, this is something one I don't want to hear. I'm not involved, so let's dead that. And then second, aren't you saved or are, are am I? Who saved? So all of us, if, especially when everyone involved is professing Christianity, hey, y'all both my sister. Y'all both my brother. I, I, I'm not about to take sides on this. The side I'm going to take is the Bible side. And you're to go over and do this. You're to address it with them. So we have to be mindful that even in the instance where it's, our friend or our personal buddy that may come to us and feel like whatever whatever I, I i was god was dealing with me about i had this thing about venting and god was like okay vent to me uh because some some of what you vent people can't handle mm -hmm. and, and so then now that you've invented and you have moved on now you've poisoned that person a little bit and then they don't even they can't even trace what why do way about so and so i don't even really know them it came because they my home girl and i just had to vent and so these are the things that we have to be careful about be careful. that <laughs> that we don't allow to this behavior to linger in us this is why paul is, peter said hey get rid of all of this stuff because if you leave any root of this it spring up so quick and it doesn't take any time because it's a part of our old man <laughs> And, and, and this pushes us right over into verse 2. It says, like newborn babies. I'm, and of course, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Uh, 1 Peter 2 and 2. Like newborn babies, you must crave sp pure spiritual milk. And, and I used to look at this scripture before I started studying to teach this lesson. That this was really talking to babes in Christ. But when I really looked at it, I learned that, no, this ain't talking to just babes. Mm -hmm. It's saying that I should never lose my desire for the pure milk of the word of God. So whether I'm saved yet, since yesterday or I'm saved for 30 years, mm -hmm. it's, it starts off with like newborn babes, in other words, it's, it's drawing a picture that I should have a desire, like babies have a desire for pure milk. Mm -hmm. That's how I should desire the word of God. That I ain't looking for fluff. That I ain't looking to get my ears scratched. I don't have itching ears, but I'm looking and desire, the scripture says this, he that hunger and thirst after righteousness mm -hmm. shall be filled. Mm -hmm. I thought about the word milk. Milk for a baby take care of hunger and thirst. Mm -hmm. Babies don't drink water. Mm -hmm. They get milk. Mm -hmm. So they thirst and they hunger is resolved are sobbed in milk. And so the scripture is saying, regardless of where you at in Christ, don't lose that desire. Don't, it, it, like newborn babes, babies, you must crave like newborn babies. So, so I'm pastoring. I still got to act. I, when I come before God, I still got to crave his pure word. I can't get to a point where that I'm flying in all over the country preaching and I'm and I'm not studying because I, I'm good. 
No, because God can take a passage mm -hmm. and flip it about a thousand different ways. If I if I if I crave mm -hmm. the pure milk of His Word, if I desire the King James Version says that uh, as newborn babes did is desire the sincere milk of the word. Okay, if, if I have that craving for God's word, every time I go in there and look at it, and, and I share this with my wife, you know, when we teaching series like this, where it can go for two and three months, there are times I just have to stop looking at it. <laughs> because if I continue to look at mm -hmm. what I dealt with last week, I can end up starting all over again because now I'm seeing something that I did not see last week. Where do that come from? It comes from my desire. It comes from me wanting to know. And the, and the, and the Lord is saying, hey, if you drive, draw nigh to me, oh, I draw nigh to you. Your eyes haven't seen, neither have your ears heard. You know, if, if, if you come after me, I got something to show you. I can take you deeper. Do you, do you really want to go deep? Because all this stuff about, oh, I, I ain't, I'm not growing. If you're not growing, I, I, I question, do you have a desire? Because I can grow from the worst preacher. I can grow from the worst teacher simply because when I when they get finished with me, if I got a desire, I'm going back. See, because, uh, you know, in, in church, we do a lot. Of, I see people doing a lot of writing down. Yes. And those, those folks for sure should never come back a, a year or six months later and saying, you know, I'm just not growing. No, no, no. Don't go go study that stuff that you wrote down. Because the scripture says, like newborn babies, you must crave, which means thirst for or earnestly desire, pure spiritual milk, so that you will grow. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I think I, I agree with you. I would say probably about you know, about 90%. Mm -hmm. The fact that, you know, the, the 10% that I have a point of contention there is that, you know, if they have certain practices that, you know, it's like you are hungry and you are thirsting for the word of God to be teaching, to be preaching, but every time you come in, it's like you're socializing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, you know, I was in, and I'll use this as an example. I was in Agape for like two years, me and my family. And for the man fellowship, it was like, okay, the, the preaching on Sunday is good. But again, also, it was all political, mm -hmm. right? We, you talk politics. And when it means when we meet, we talk about Jewish. Jewish this, you know, most of them want to be uh, Jewish brothers and sisters. And I'm like, what are we here for? How are we sharpening one another? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm hungry. I want to learn how did you get over this, brother? Mm -hmm. How did you, if you have a, you know, um, uh, let's say if you have, for example, some type of behavior that you're trying to get rid of, you know, you have, uh, you know, uh, wandering eyes, you have uh, pornography issues, you have uh, adultery, whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, we talk about, hey, brother, I went through this. And this is how I got, I, I, you know, I got through it. Let's strengthen one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you come out there trying to tell me um, Jewish uh, holidays, uh, let's do this, let's celebrate this, let's celebrate this. I mean, to me, it wasn't helping me. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't helping me. I can go back and I would have stayed home and, and read my Bible. Mm -hmm. I could not stay home because it's a waste of my time. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it's very, you got to be careful where you are planted. You know, I know God is the one who plants you at the church, you know, so this particular season in our life, me and my family's life, we are very, we're trying to be very strategic, you know, we're asking God to place us where we need to be, right. where we can help with the outbuilding of his kingdom, because, I mean, we want to put our hand to the fire to, to be able to help, mm -hmm. you know, um, I just don't want to be just sitting there, you know, unless, you know, I mean, certain congregation, you, you, churches you go, I mean, I've been to a couple right here that, 
when you go, you have all the elders in the, in the front, you know, and the pastor's the only one teaching mm -hmm. or preaching every Sunday after Sunday, you know. Uh, when you go some places, it's just, you know, uh, you know, you're trying to figure out, okay, what what is the need? What's the, the need in this organization that I can be able to say, okay, y'all have this going on here. Maybe the, the Holy Spirit leading me to, you know, help in this type of ministry, you know, but not like that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So we are, we, we pray that God will lead us in a, in a place where there's a need, wherever capacity that God want to place us, that will be able to be, um, you know, um, help to that ministry, not just to the ministry, to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? In, in, and also that we also can grow. Yes. You know, because our first ministry is our home. And I thank God, and I share this testimony, that God is using Nigel. Nigel, my son, is so, I mean, I just thank God every day for the fact that, you know, the example that we set in the house, this young man is now, is following their footsteps. Mm -hmm. When he come home from school, he said, Dad, I got to read my Bible. That I got, I said, well, I understand you got to read your Bible, but you need to set a timeline that you say, okay, when I come back from school, I'm going to eat, I'm going to read my Bible for this long, then I'm going to do my homework. He does it in a way that now he be missing schoolwork. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So the Spirit of God, I see that it's working in him, and I'm like, God, you know, and sometimes he will share the same things with me, and I was like, he said, hey, what, what does this mean, or... I'm struggling with this. How do, do I get over this type of deal? Mm. You know, you know, and that's what I don't want just be in any type of church. That right. is just going to be just wondering. We want a place where, you know, we are hungry, that we're going to be fed, mm -hmm. you know. But if you're in a, a, a place where you're not being fed, okay, you, 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 you hunger and thirst for the, for the word of God, however, it's like, you know, it's like a social club. Yeah. And, and, and this is where it's important that we be led where we go. Be, because right. if, if, we, if, if we end up in social clubs, part of that is on us. Yeah. Well, all of it is, is, is on us because sometimes we can't want something more than what, than what God wanted for us. And so sometimes we be, we, we're like, okay, I know I got to be in church. I know I got to do this and I got to do that. And God is saying, I'm going to lead you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lead you. And, 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 and part of that, and it, and it all connects here, that as newborn babies, we must desire the pure spiritual milk. So if I go somewhere and, and, and the, I was just telling somebody um, the, the other day, that um, go to people rather. I said, make sure you go to Bible study because they tell me, oh, I, be, I went to the church and oh, it was pretty good. I said, okay, make sure you go to the Bible study. Go go to the teaching settings because you you don't hollering and screaming mm -hmm. is 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 not what you need. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't care where you at in God. Hollering and screaming is not what you need. And I'm not saying anything against the hoop. But what I'm saying is that if the hoop is an hour and there is no teaching, then, then, then you know, most of the time we're just going to be surface. We, we're going to be surface. And, and, and Bishop Noah Jones said that when, when this whole pandemic thing um, happened, how he realized that, man, many preachers had taught people the blessings of God, but not the relationship of God. Because the ble at the height of everything, we told people that if you do this, God is going to do this. But we never taught, he was saying that how they never taught people really how to have a relationship with God, that if he don't do this for you, that you're good. And that I'm not thinking about walking away because I can't go to church and I'm not walking away because, you know, this one died and the church can't give me a funeral 
because of of COVID and all of this. So when we when we when we desire sincere milk of God's word, the scriptures say we're gonna grow into a full experience of salvation. Man, when 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 I read that, I was like, wow. What do you think that means to grow into a full experience of salvation? Anybody, what do you think it means to grow into a full experience of salvation? Well, if I could for just a second, go back to what you just said okay. and then come back. Um, one thing that I love about God is he's not going to put anything. There's nothing in his word that's there that he isn't going to back up. And so if he says to us, because he says to us, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together, because he says, if you thirst and right, thirst and hunger after righteousness, you shall be filled because of those things. He's obligated to mm -hmm. us to make sure that we do get into a place where we can have those things. So I appreciate the fact that because it's something that he said we need to have and that we need to do, he, he will make sure that he will lead us into it. It may not be the way that we like it, and it may be different, and we may have to overlook some of our <laughs> proclivities and things that we'd rather not deal with um, to get to the, 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 the meat of the matter. But I thank God, one, that he is obligated um, to make sure that we do that. Now, to answer your uh, question about a full experience, I believe so many of us, can get saved and be like, okay, so now I'm, I'm not going to hell. So thanks, God. And there's so much more mm -hmm. to to it than now I'm not going to hell. Now I know that God is real. Now he saved me. And that's a wonderful place to start. Right. But we don't stay there. Because any time after that moment where we <laughs> receive salvation, we receive Jesus into our heart, it's a lot that happens right right after that. And there's more that's going to keep coming and keep coming. And so I think what we have to realize is we really are on a journey just like kids. The way that babies, you know, they can't lift their heads. And at first you're doing everything for them. And this is how God begins to answer our prayer and move quickly. And then he begins to stretch out his responses. And then we have to learn to trust him. And all of those kinds of things. He's saying, listen, if you keep coming after me, with, with a sincere desire, I'm going to make sure that you get the full experience. That I'm not going to invite you to this table and have all this food here and then tell you, okay, get up, you had two tablespoons. No, if you really want it, he says, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to make sure that this is what you have, but you have to come with the appetite. So what does that mean? That means that we can't be filling ourselves up on junk. You know how your mom would say before it's time to eat? No, you don't get no. You need to have space for your food. You're not about to eat no chips and drink no juice and all that right before you eat. So this is the thing. This is how I'm um, equating what Peter is saying. The top part of that of what uh, chapter two, the first verse, he's saying, get rid of all this junk, mm -hmm. so that when you come to the table, you can get full off of the nutrient that you need. You can have space in your spiritual stomach to get the fullness of what God has for you. If you full of all this other stuff, you're not going to be hungry. You're not going to be thirsty. You'll come and sit at the table just to for the fellowship or just to because you know you're supposed to be there. But when you starve <laughs> this evil behavior, you will have all kinds of space for the good food, for the full experience of salvation. Preach, I see you, Michael. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to say that, um, you know, not only, you know, you said experience full salvation. Uh, to me, it's, it's, it's like, okay, yes, you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Now you got salvation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not only are you so, so then what? After that, then what? Mm -hmm. You know, you still got to live life. Mm -hmm. You know, so experiencing that full salvation to me is like, Everything on earth here, you're going to experience the goodness of God. Everything will be uh, from harm or danger. From, I mean, the experience alone is not only saying that, oh, I am saved now. I got salvation now. I've got my slot, you know, so I'm good, you know. But you still got to go through some issues. 
Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't get rid of all these stuff, you know, it's going to be difficult for you. But when experiencing the full sal- uh, salvation of God is the Holy Spirit leading you, you know, be paying attention. We talk about having a relationship with God, you know, and, you know, um, let's say, you know, being attentive to his, his voice and be able to remove you from danger. You know, all these experiences that you're going to experience in, 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 in life, in the world, before he comes and, and, and take you with him, you know, it's the fullness of, to me, it's the, like that's the fullness of the salvation. You know, because what's the point of uh, saying I, I, I've acquired my slot, but live, live like hell mm-hmm. on this earth? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'm going to wait till I, I go to heaven to enjoy. <laughs> no. Yes, I want to enjoy while I'm here. I'm a child of God, and I should be, I should enjoy life. Mm-hmm. You know, he said, I came to give you life and, and life more abundantly. That yes, sir. Life, like the Bible said, you know, of the abundant life of Christ. It's the fullness of the salvation, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and that's what I think. Yes, sir. Anybody else on, on this full experience? So as newborn babes, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Man, that's powerful. I like the fact that it says grow into. So mm-hmm. it lets you know that this is not something that's just going to happen. It, it it takes effort. You have to water it. You have to, because then you got to feed it. You got to do all of these things for it to grow. And so I think that sometimes some people are, if you're type A like me, you're used to kind of stuff. If I do this, then this is how it's going to go. But I can take some comfort in the fact that not abuse it, but take comfort in the fact that God understands that this is going to take, this is, this is a process. Mm -hmm. And so I can't then allow the enemy to frustrate me to the point where now I no longer want to participate because it didn't happen overnight. What this is saying is this, there's more to experience and you'll keep experiencing it and growing into it until we don't have any more breath left. And so I think that that is, um, comforting to me. Takara? I was actually going to say the same thing is that <laughs> it's in our salvation is in phases and mm. so the point that I was at when I first came to know God and to know who he was is not the same level in which that I am today and so as we continue to go through these trials as we go through these tribulations as we get these blessings as more prayers are answered we are truly able to know exactly who God is and then the more that we ex- the more that we know him the more that we encounter him then we are able to fully experience him and the fullness of salvation in which it actually is because when we first come we don't know we right. think we have an idea but as we mature mm-hmm. then we get more solid in that and it's not such a surface level Mm-hmm. Man, good, good point. And, and when I was looking at it, I was thinking about full experience of salvation. We learn how to live holy. We learn how to live righteous. The word righteous mean doing the right thing the right way. And so many times we have done the right thing the, the wrong way. But as we live righteous, we learn how to do the right thing the right way, okay? Um, And so we're learning these things. We learn how to treat others right. We learn how to pray for our enemies, okay? Those who despitefully use us. We we come out of um, Ecclesiastes and Psalms of Solomon that say, hey, um, an eye for an eye and a tooth for... (laughs) For a tooth, we, we learn to grow out of that, okay, um, into this whole eternal life. We start to experience eternal life once we get saved, okay? This is, as Minister Arthur said, we're not going to wait till we get on the other side to experience eternal life. We, we're experiencing it now, okay? It's just going to get better. That, that that that's it. It's going to get 
better. And, and so as we go on through certain things, God is growing and, and maturing and developing us. So, so the scripture ends up saying, cry out for this nourishment. In other words, long for it. Have a desire for this type of nourishment. What milk brings to a baby, let the word of God bring that to us. That's what it's saying. And, and a baby can't have in and everything. I, I, I don't care who, which auntie. I have my, one of my sisters like to give the kids Pepsi. Mm -hmm. No, you ain't giving Daphne no Pepsi <laughs> as, as no baby. I give all the kids some Pepsi. No, that's what's wrong with a whole lot of them. They done had stuff that they weren't supposed to have before they were supposed to have it. It had nothing to do with nourishment. And so the scriptures say, cry out for this. This, this, this thirsting, this hunger, this craving. So, so it, cry out for this type of nourishment. No, you, you, no one can force it on you. You're going to have to do, like it. When I think about the Bishop Coles, they still have to do verse 2. When, when, when I think about the Bishop Jakes, they still have to do verse two. Man, this is a level playing field. We all got to do verse two. And, and if we will, everybody can see when verse two is not being done. Everybody can see when verse two is not being done because now we get to a place and we can't grow any further. Verse three says, now that you have had, now that you have tasted, have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. In other words, it's saying, because you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness, do verse one and two. 